French President Emmanuel Macron and British Prime Minister Theresa May are urging all sides to take urgent steps to de-escalate the situation. Macron had a conversation with the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, and Theresa May spoke on the phone with the newly appointed Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman. Meanwhile, the German Foreign Minister Sigmar Gabriel met with his Saudi counterpart, Adel Al Jabir, during a tour of the Gulf region. The best solution to come out of this conflict, then I think, is a mutual agreement to end all support of terrorists or extremist organizations. We all know that it's not state-organized, but often by private individuals. Qatar rejects accusations it funds armed groups and has delivered its response to the 13 demands from Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Egypt and the United Arab Emirates. The contents of the letter haven't been released, but it's now with the Kuwait's emir, who's been mediating in the dispute and helped arrange for a two-day extension for Qatar to meet the demands of the four countries blockading it. The embargo by Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain and Egypt has now been in place for almost a month. A list of demands were submitted to Qatar 10 days ago. These included shutting down Al Jazeera, cutting ties with Iran, closing a Turkish military base and not associating with organizations like the Muslim Brotherhood, apparently regarded by Egypt and Saudi Arabia in particular as a threat to their sovereignty. What's interesting about this is that, um, in their minds at least, this is all part of the same process, a sort of counter-revolution against popular uprisings that Qatar, one way or another, has seemed to have supported. But it's also actually an implicit compliment, if you want to take the whole thing the other way around. It's basically to say that the forces that were there in 2011 in the Arab Spring are still there now and still threatening these guys uh, whose only response is repression, cutting off the media, uh, and, uh, and, and opening up, opening fire on crowds. The U.S. too has renewed efforts to resolve the crisis. Over the weekend, President Donald Trump held telephone conversations with the leaders of Qatar, Saudi Arabia and the UAE. The blockading states are due to meet in Cairo on Wednesday to consider Qatar's response to their demands. Qatar maintains the blockade as a violation of international law, a position backed by a number of legal experts. Paul Chadurjian, Al Jazeera.